the expression in the Greek, which comes through in the first reading as making the most of your time, is actually redeeming the time. As though we were trying to snatch back what we were losing. Time. Just the other day I was talking to a young man who comes to me and he was present at a funeral of a friend of his who had been detoxicated through a community at Nock, run eventually by Sister Elvira, but had re-fallen some time after getting back. And he had taken again out of force of habit what he was used to. But because he was in detox, his body couldn't take it. So he woke up in the beyond. I've told you before how my mother told me one Sunday morning on the phone how in Bala College there was a group of good young Bible students, ministers and students on a weekend conference and during the break between lectures one of the young clergymen at the top of the stairs, the balcony in this old college was talking to one of his brethren and getting quite excited about the subject he started to make gestures with his arms the only thing was that he was carrying also the laptop and this laptop was a bit important because of all it contained, notes and knowledge. And so he tried to save the laptop as it started to fall over the banister. The only thing is that he lost balance in doing so and a few seconds later he too woke up in eternity. And a career of probably good preaching was lost in one's moment's distraction. Just this morning, that explains partly perhaps why there was this distraction which led to my going back to get the camera, otherwise no one else could profit from this little homily. I had been talking to my brother on the phone, who was calling me back to Wales essentially, because our dear mother probably is on the way out. And again, when these things face one, one sees in a flash time passing. One sees one's parents, the happy moments of happy life, the little things that the world will never know about, the joys of family, and one sees the present. And indeed it takes one back to similar moments, e.g. when Dad was petering out. Again, seeing a dear face becoming weaker and visibly suffering, and then suddenly, at the moment of release, when the soul goes forth, a peace and even a corn slight smile returned to that once familiar face, as though saying, there is peace on this side, and it's all over, the battle and the pain. Indeed, his last audible words were, it hurts. This week, through divine providence, I had been called to help in a convent of enclosed nuns who have 24-7 adoration. And that means that also one helps out at night when you're there. You give your hour in the heart of night, and a nun comes from the other side of the grill, greets you, and goes to bed. Another one comes an hour later and greets you and takes your place at the other side of the grill and the torch of prayer is passed on through the night. The night. It is at night, and it is especially in the monastic night, that time is heard to pass. In the heart of angelic presence, one sees things as they are. And indeed, in a week, of absence of modern intoxication, 
I mean artificial bombardment of the mind, and indeed absence of all communication, oral or mental, one again sees things as they are. It is a great release. It is a great blessing. It is at last reality. It is to hear the power of a sentence written with nothing but print on a book. It's a different mode. And also, one senses what actually life is about in depth, compared with the absence of depth in the average human soul that comes towards you. The points of reference are quite different. And indeed, I have noticed, and I will propose this to you, that to have a place where grace has spoken to you many times in the past, and to come to that place again, is doubly powerful. Why? Because it's not just a place of grace, it's a place of your grace. As when lovers, years later, visit the first places of their encounter in early youth, and relive the spark, so too coming back to a familiar tabernacle somehow reignites the spark of yore. There's an old Welsh saying, Hawdd cynnau tân ar hen eilwyd, easy to light a fire on an old hearth. This is home. <laughs> Just after ordination, I kept my promise to celebrate my first Mass, if possible, with the nuns close to where we live in Wales, the Carmelites. So I went there, and I spent a while also in the church in Dorgeshlai itself, where things had happened before. And I remember how, years before, as a student, I'd spent a couple of hours in front of that tabernacle, waiting for a word which would change all either way. And the word without a word was this, go for it. Because the letter had come from here in Ireland to enter if I wanted, Kilnacroft, out of the blue. And so I took it up and all happened from there. But that two hours of letting the Lord be Lord over thought and heart, and also putting things before him as Lord without any lordship over my heart or will or time, was the one thing that that Lord was waiting for. And that is why I would say to you, especially if young, do that. Take the risk of putting all time before it happens back in the hands of its giver, and let him reign. I remember when we were burying my father, we had this wonderful funeral in Carnarvon itself, with beautiful Welsh singing, the chapel was packed, and you know what that means in Wales. But then we respected his wish, because he'd written that in a note, Cladwchfi in San Vihangel, bury me in San Vihangel. And he'd shown my cousin the place by the hedge, and there we put him. But I remember, in the last part of the journey, we were just behind the hearse. And we commented to each other, in his last journey, he was only ten minutes late. He'd always been very punctual, getting to places even half an hour before. Punctuality, that means doing the right thing at the right time. Not rushing, but taking time as it comes, because time is damaged by putting into it too many things. So I'd leave you with one tip, my friends, before your time runs out. Take it slowly. Don't ruin it by overloading it and learn the joy 
of simple, simple emptiness. There's a place, Tegelin Monastery. There is a place where I can go and be alone with utter being. There's a place where I can come and close my eyes and see what opened they saw not. There's a space where enters not the world, and hurled is all that moves into the void, and noised is not the day by many sounds, and glisters small, flash loudly in a calm, long, long forgot. There is, I say, a place where I can come when blue is not the colour of the sky but grey of damaged hue. For in my home the whole world made its nest, and though I sigh, at many sighs they're healed, I cannot bear another day, bid all men's days to share.